about this. Right? So according to the Bible, all these brothers would be God's chosen people. All right? So do you believe that God has a chosen people according to the Bible? Yeah. All right, so who, who would be God's chosen people in the Bible? Uh, Israel. Israel, so you already know that, right? Yeah. Okay, so who would Israel be today, 2024? Uh, I don't know. Jewish people? Jewish people? Yeah. All right, so we're going to read the Bible. We go find out if they fit the description, okay. right? So let me get the book of Revelation, chapter uh, one, verse one, right? Because you believe in Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. When Christ, he was the king of the Jews, right? Yeah. All right. So let's find out what Christ looked like according to the Bible. Okay. We go find out if Christ looked like all the rest of the Jews that that's in Israel right now. So bring that out, uh, Revelation one. Again. Book of Revelation, chapter one, verse one. The revelations of Jesus Christ. So it's going to reveal what Christ looked like according to the Bible. Can you read it? Which God gave unto him. Right. To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Uh -huh. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. All right, now jump down to verse 13. 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So the Son of Man is another name for Christ, right? Yeah. Clothed a garment down to the foot. So it said he had on a long garment that went down to his foot. Can you read it? And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Right. His head and his hair were white like wool. So it said that his hairs on his head was white like wool, yeah. right? Yeah. So what race of people on the earth have woolly textured ears? I'm sorry, what was that? What race of people on the planet Earth have woolly textured ears? But it said that it said that his hair was white like wool. Uh -huh. What race of people have woolly hair? I don't know. So Willie would be like not who, who race of people have not to be. I don't know. That would be so called black people, right? Because no. like your people, y'all people have woolly hair. Would you say your hair is woolly? I guess not. It's no. not, right? It's no. kinda it's kinda like stringy, right? Yeah. So we said that Christ had woolly textured hair. Can you read it? Huh. As white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh -huh. And his feet and like his feet, hold on, now his feet is going into his skin color. Right? Yeah, so broad, so right. it said that his feet was what? His feet like a fine brass. It's a yeah. brass. What color is yeah. brass? Yeah, it's kind of dark. Dark, right? Yeah. It's like a dark brown, yeah. right? Like a pink, right? Yeah. So keep reading. <laughs> As if they burned in a furnace. Right. As if what? As if they burned in a yeah. furnace. How dark was Christ? As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. So it said he was so dark. It looked like he got burned in a furnace, right? Yeah. So what does that mean? Do, do, that, do that same description fit? people that live in Israel right now, the Jewish people, you have today description? Um, not really, but not really, let me not ask at you all. this. Like, hold on, not at all, because look, have you ever seen a Jewish man that's a little woolly hair, right? That's dark, like it burned in the furnace? They don't no, look like that, right? No. So according to the Bible, this would be the true image of Christ. Right. This is the oldest known depiction of Christ, right? Put it, Right. Sorry, I'm asking you guys, like, why does that matter? Why does yeah. that matter? Yeah. Because according to the Bible, the Lord said, believe on me as the scriptures have said. Uh -huh. So, in America, they have a false image of Christ, right? That looks like your people, right? Because if I go on Google and I type in Jesus Christ, what images going to come up? Yeah, you, you probably would have white skin. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But the Bible said... Christ said, but he go me as the scripture has said. Yeah. Now, does the scripture say that Christ looked like your people? Uh, I not, guess no. not. It's no. not, because we just read in the Revelation, right? Yeah. So, according to the Bible, he would look more like this, right? So, that's why I matters because no, the truth no, matters, no. right? He yeah. said, but he go me as the scripture has said. I got the scripture. Right? This, this guy's hair is not white. Uh, right, but, I mean, this is more of a depiction as what he would look like in the the that they give us, right? I guess. You want to bring that up? I guess. Yeah. Oh, it's in St. John's chapter 7, verse 38. It says, He that believeth on me. So Christ said, He that believeth on me as what? As the scripture has said. Not as they portray him. Yeah. As the scripture has said. No, it really don't matter. As the scripture has said. So it said, We got to believe on him as the scripture has said, right? It says, Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. See that? So that all, that all goes back to the truth. 
Yeah. Right? So we came out here to show you the true image of our Lord and Savior. Not that false image that America did, right? So did that answer your question? I guess, a little bit, although I'm, I'm a little hung up on, like, is it more important to believe in what Jesus said and taught, or is it, like, it, I guess I've never really thought about, like, um, thinking about the image of Jesus in my head and making sure that that exact image is correct. Right. Versus, like, following what he taught. Like, what what do you guys believe about what Jesus taught? Okay, what did he taught? Who did he teach to? Uh, that's the, that's the most... Important, to a lot of that's, people. Oh, no, that's the yeah. most... That's the most important uh -huh. thing because uh -huh. did Christ teach to everybody? And was his message specifically for one race of people? It was for... For the most part, one race of people. For, for the most part? Yeah. All right, well, let me get Matthew 15, 24. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Can I, can I get the book of John, chapter 18, verse 24? Bring that up. Book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said. So this is out of Christ's own mouth. It said, but he answered and said what? I am not sent. I am not sent. But unto the lost sheep. Unto the who? To the lost sheep. Unto the lost sheep of what? Of the house of Israel. Of the house of everybody. Of the house of Israel. He preached to all the, the whole world. Of the house of Israel. To every nation. Of the house of Israel. Of the house of Israel. That's out of Christ's own mouth. He said, I am not sent. That means I didn't come for nobody else. But the house of Israel. Oh, right? whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep reading, though. Keep reading. Hold on. We're going we to keep reading, but let's finish this. Okay. okay. It's the book of St. John, chapter 18, and verse 20. It says, Jesus answered him, uh -huh. I spake openly to the world. So Christ said, I spake openly to the world. Now it's going to further explain who the world is in this context. Because when people say the world, they think that's talking about every race of people and yeah. every nation. But it's going to explain it to you, right? I ever taught in the synagogue. In the synagogues. And in the temple. In the temples. Whether the Jews always resort. No, I thought it was for everybody. Whether the Jews always resort. So he said, openly to the world in the synagogues where the Jews, the Israelites, always resort. Right. So that world in that context is talking about the Jews and the nation of Israel. Right. So nowhere in the Bible did Christ tell us to go and preach to every race of people. Right. Oh. Right? His oh. message is only for the, the nation of Israel. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Hey, we we've been dealing with that. We dealt with that earlier, right? All right. So Matthew 28 and what verse? Let me finish this. Yeah. And it says, And in secret have I said nothing. See that? So what verse did you want about the 28? Because we already uh, did with the Sorry, earlier. I don't remember the exact verse, but... So why did you quote it? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, the part uh, where uh, the Great Commission... All right, we go help so you out. Let's get verse 18. Go and make disciples of all nations. All right, we go help you out. Let's get verse 18. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, uh -huh. All power is given unto me right. in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. All right, so let me stop right there. So in that context, who is the all nations? When you say go and teach all nations, do that mean that he got it, uh, he wants us to teach to every race of people? Is that what that's talking about? <clears throat> all right, well, let's get the proper context. Let me get uh, Matthew 10 and 5. Oh my God. You, so let me ask you a question. Do you believe, do you believe the Bible? Do you believe the Bible is a book of contradictions? What's it called? No. No. It's on YouTube. Oh, for real? So, so you, do you believe that the Bible is a book of contradictions? No, I don't. No, all right. So we're going to read this and we're going to see this is a contradiction to the scripture that you brought out. So read that, Matthew 10 and 5. The book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Uh -huh. These 12 Jesus sent forth. So the, so the 12 that he sent forth was his apostles. Can you read it? Come. And commanded them, saying, uh -huh. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, right? And into any city of the Sumerians, into ye not. Right. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, wait a minute. In this verse, he said, go not into the way of the Gentiles, yeah. the other nations, yeah. but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But why in the other verse that we brought out of Matthew, he said, go and preach unto all nations. Wouldn't that be a contradiction 
Yeah. If you tell the disciples, only teach the house of Israel, but then in the other verse, you say, go and teach every nation. He's giving that, that instruction for that specific mission. But God, God changed, Christ changed. No, it, it, it's not about changing, it's about they're doing something at one exactly. time and doing that, something that, at another. That, 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 that would doesn't change. really... That would be a contradiction because not really. why would he teach all nations if he told them to not teach all nations? That don't make sense. Really? So we go go into the context, you know, we go give you the proper context of what nation that that's talking about. Yeah. You got that in Acts? Uh, uh, let me that, get that. that James 1 and 1. Yeah, let me get, uh, let me get, uh, Tobit 13. All right, so let's bring this up. Matter of fact, let's start at verse 1. Uh, this is the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. So it's going to tell you and explain to you what it means when he said, go and teach all nations. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord. They were all with one accord, right? In one place. Uh -huh. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Right. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh -huh. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them verse 4 and they were all filled with the holy spirit they were all filled with the holy spirit right Keep and reading. began to speak with other tongues that mean they began to speak in other languages right Keep reading. as the spirit gave them utterance uh -huh. verse 5 and there were dwelling at jerusalem jews who jews so they were dwelling at jerusalem Jews, right? Read. Devout men. Uh -huh. Out of every nation. Wait, where did the Jews come from? Out of every nation. Because if you study the Bible, you will understand that the Jews and the Israelites went through a diaspora. And they were scattered to every nation upon the face of the earth. Sure. So it said that the Jews came from every nation, right? Sure. Read it. Under heaven. Under heaven, right? Keep reading. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together uh -huh. and were confounded right. because they, every man, heard them speak in his own language. In his own language. So you had Jews that were Israelites by bloodline, but they came from other nations. They came from other countries yeah. and they spoke in different languages. Like if I'm a Jew by bloodline and I was born and raised in Greece, I'm not going to keep the same customs that the ancient Israelites keep. I'm going to keep the same customs that the Greeks keep. I'm going to worship the same God as the Greeks worship, and I'm going to speak the same language as the Greeks. You see that? You read it? Verse 7, uh -huh. and they were all amazed and marveled, saying uh -huh. to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Right. Verse 8, and, now, and how hear we every man in his own tongue? So every Jew spoke in a different language because they came from different nations. Right. Wherein we were born. Uh, where we were born. So you had Jews and Israelites that were not born in the land of Israel or in Jerusalem. They were born in other countries. Right? Parthians and Medes. So now it's naming the different countries that the Jews came from. You had Jews that came from Parthians and Medes in the world. And Elamites. Right. And the dwellers of Mesopotamia. Right. You had those Jews that dwelt in Mesopotamia. Right. You read it. And Judea. And Judea. Right. And Cappadocia. Uh huh. And Pontus. And Asia. And Pergamum. And Perfamilia. And Egypt. And Egypt. You see that? So that were the Jews that came from other countries. Now bring out what you got. Uh, let's get this last one. Then we go. Let you go. All right. Let's bring it up. Book of Tobit, chapter thirteen, verse three. Confess him before the Gentiles, uh -huh. ye children of Israel. Ye children of Israel, right? We, For he hath scattered us among them. So the Lord hath scattered the Israelites among all the heathen nations. Because remember, when you read Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the Lord said he was going to scatter the Israelites into every nation for breaking his commandments. Right. That was the curse that he put upon the nation of Israel, right? Keep reading. Verse 4. There declare his greatness. And exalt him before all the living, right. for he is our Lord, and he is the God of our Father forever. Right, keep reading. And he will scourge us for our iniquities, and will have mercy again, and will gather us out of all nations. So he said that he will gather the Israelites out of all nations, because the Israelites were scattered into all nations. So going back to that Matthew chapter 28 and verse 18, when Christ told the disciples, to go and preach to all nations, he's telling them to go and preach to the Jews that were scattered in those nations. Because remember, Matthew 10 and 5, he said, go not into the Gentiles, 
but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? May I bring up a couple things? So the one thing about the lost sheep, uh -huh. if you keep reading, he's talking to this Canaanite woman, right? Uh, and he's and he says to her, like, it's not right to give the take the food from the children and give it to the dog. Okay, so who are but the dogs? The very next let me ask you a question. That who? she says is like even the dogs okay. get the crumbs on me, the table. Now let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. Who are the dogs in that context? I guess the Gentiles. The, the other nations that yeah. are not Israelites, right? But so that goes to show you, hold on, great that, is your faith. Right, but that goes to show you that it's a difference between the dogs or the other nations and the children, which would be the children of Israel. Okay, so my, my other question, though, uh -huh. would be, would you, in, is Paul's missionary journey uh -huh. uh, to the Gentiles, which Jesus okay. is, is in the Bible, saying like this is the chosen instrument of mine to deliver the gospel to the gentiles let me, let me give let me get first corinthians chapter 12 verse 1. now that's good so you said paul's mission was to teach it to the gentiles yeah. right so was he now, against god now, now let me ask you who were the gentiles that paul was writing to Bible like this because you know when you go into that word gentiles it just means nations so it's different definitions for the word Gentiles in the Bible. You have boy, you got boy in, but in some contexts, when you go into that word Gentile, it says Helen, Helene, or Hellenistics, right? Yeah. So let's find out exactly who are the Gentiles that Paul was writing to. Let me get that first Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. Well, we'll start at verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Uh -huh. Now concerning spiritual gifts, right. brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. That ye were what? That ye were Gentiles. So he said, brethren, ye. So who is Paul's brethren? If I say my brethren, is Paul talking to every nation? Who Who is Paul's brethren? He's talking to believers. No. So if Paul, who is Paul's ethnicity? I'm listening. No, I'm asking, who is Paul's, like, who is his ethnicity or his nationality? Uh, he was a Jewish man. He was a Jew. Yeah. From the tribe of from the tribe of Benjamin, yeah. according to Romans chapter 11. Right. So if he said, my brethren, who is his brethren? If I'm a Jew, who are my brethren? But Jewish people, but I guess where, where I'm getting a little confused is he's talking about how he gives up his status as a Jewish man in Philippians. He says, I, I count all of this as trash for, for the, the joy of knowing Jesus Christ as my Lord. Right. And so, it, like, his his status, his former status as a Jew and a Pharisee really doesn't mean anything to him. But, but we try to get the proper content, though, right? Because you're talking about the Gentiles right now. Now, you confused because you think that the Gentiles that Paul is writing to is other nations. We're going to break it down for you and show you exactly who Paul is writing to. So, read that again from the top. And, uh, so like, can I get uh, Romans chapter 9 and verse 4? Uh, so first, first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 1 now concerning spiritual gifts brethren I brethren, would not so let's find out who is Paul's brethren according to the Bible so we got that uh, Romans chapter 9 it's the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 4 who are Israelites Wait, so, matter of fact let's go to the verse above God. verse 3 so this is one of Paul's letters right so let's see what Paul finna say this is Romans chapter 9 verse 3 for I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren for, for my brethren, for my kinsmen, my kinsmen, which would be my family, according to the flesh, according to the flesh, not the spirit, according to the flesh, that means your bloodline, right? We, who are Israelites? Wait, who is Paul's brethren? Who are Israelites? Who is Paul's kinsmen? Who are Israelites? According to the flesh, who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? So Paul's brethren and his kinsmen are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So now let's go back to that in uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh -huh. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, right. brethren. Brethren, which are Israelites. I will not have you ignorant. I will not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. That ye were Gentiles. So wait a minute. Why is Paul saying that these Israelites were Gentiles? If Gentiles is talking about the other nations, how can they used to be another nation? If I'm an Israelite, how can I used to be an Edomite? If I'm an Israelite, how can I used to be a Canaanite? That don't make sense. I can't change my race and my bloodline, can I? 
right? So read that, he, he read it. Huh. He said that you were Gentiles. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, uh -huh. carried away unto these dumb idols. So he said that these Israelites that are Gentiles, they, he called them Gentiles because they were carried away unto dumb idols. Now what nation of people were carried away unto idols? Uh, we're going to show you. Let me get Hosea chapter 14, verse uh, 4, verse 15. Hosea chapter 4, verse 15. We're going to show you, right? So bring it up. The book of Hosea chapter 4, verse 15. Though thou Israel play Though the harlot. Wait, who? Though thou Israel. Though thou Israel, read. Play the harlot. Play the harlot, right? Read. Yet, yet, let not Judah offend. Uh -huh. And come not ye until Gilgad. Right. Neither go ye up to Beth Aven, nor, nor swear the Lord liveth. For Israel slided back. For who? For Israel slided back. So the Lord said, for the nation of Israel slided back. Read. As a backsliding heifer. Why? Read. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Why keep reading? Ephraim is joined to idols. Wait, who was joined to idols? Ephraim is joined to idols. So the Lord said, the nation of Israel and the children of Ephraim, which are the Israelites, were joined unto idols. Can you read it? Let him alone. He said what? Let him alone. He said cut him off because they were joined into idols. So now let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So that one nation of people, or the Gentiles that Paul is writing to in 1 Corinthians, those same people that were joined into idols are talking about the Israelites. So keep reading. Verse 3. Come. Wherefore I give you to understand. So I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God uh -huh. call of Jesus accursed. Right, so that was it on that. So let me get 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. So these Gentiles that Paul is writing to are the nation of Israel. They are Israelites. Remember we read in uh, Acts chapter 2 